Terrific. Uh, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the ninth session of the WMGA Swing Series. I'm Lori Ann Cerullo, and I am the president of the WMGA, and I'm very excited to be talking to you about not only this particular Swing Series, but about the Swing Series in general. Uh, we started this, as you remember, that we were uh, using the Swing Series as a way to communicate with everybody during the quarantine period. And even though we're beyond that at this point, we're still using it as a vehicle to give you information and to provide information golf related for memberships. And we appreciate the feedback and the input that you have given us in regards to this series. And so we wanted to provide something in regards to the health and wellness, which is one of the topics that you guys have thought, uh, have suggested. And it was kind of fortuitous that over the Labor Day weekend after about eight days of playing golf in succession, I kind of hurt myself trying to address one of my balls in the rough because my golf balls are socially distancing themselves um, by default. And when I hit the golf ball, I did everything wrong. And the next day I couldn't step on my foot. Um, and I used the KT tape that Ed and KT tape has provided us. And I would say within half a day, I was able to at least put pressure on my foot and by the next day walk. So it really did help speed up my recovery there. And in talking with Sarah and Alexis about this, Alexis had talked to us about a strain that she had in her neck and how that was addressed with CBD. And I said, you know, CBD is kind of new. It's out there. Everyone knows about it. But we hear mixed things about it. And they said, well, talk to this gal, Stephanie, who used to be with the WMGA. And within five minutes of having a conversation with Stephanie, I thought that she was just so knowledgeable and articulate about the nuances of CBD because it doesn't sound like it's a one size fits all that I thought it would be great to have a session to talk about you know, CBD 101. So I am so happy to introduce Ed Terrace, who is the Vice President of Sales for KT Tape, um, as well as Stephanie Harris, who is the General Manager of Sugar Bottom Hemp, that will talk to us about CBD. So uh, with that, just to give you a little bit of the technical aspects of it, I will have a one-on-one -on -one with Ed. If you have any questions, you can put that in the chat room and Sarah will be monitoring that. And then we will turn over to Stephanie and Alexis and Sarah will be doing the one-on-one -on -one questions there as well. And remember, stay, um, in tu stay tuned uh, during the session because we will have be having some gift bags being given out to some of the attendees during the presentation. Um, so with that, um, let me also uh, introduce Ed again and say first and foremost, Ed, I have to thank you for not only your time, but your generosity and support of the WMGA. Since we met you at the PGA show, you have told us how to work with our KT tape, which I have here for my arthritic thumb. And you have been so generous with the WMGA with your time and with your, prod your products. Uh, in fact, um, I've been uh, putting together our gift bag that we have for our attendees that have the KT tape and the blister prevention and treatment that we put in all their packages. So thank you for your support and your generosity. And when we asked you to do this, you took absolutely no hesitation in helping us. So thank you very much for joining us. Well, thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Lorianne uh, and Sarah for all the work that you've put into this and allowing me to do this. Again, KT Tape, as far as a company is concerned, we just want to make sure that we're, again, supporting your efforts and what you do out there. And we really want to make sure that we're getting everybody those rounds of golf that they want to play and they play in the field. Great. And as you might need to speak up because you're going in and out, so I don't know if there's some ambient noise in the room that you're in. But with that, let me start off with uh, a question. And, and actually, let me just sideways. So Stephanie will be coming on a little bit later, but I just wanted to introduce Stephanie Official. She's the general manager of the Sugar Bottom Hemp. So Stephanie, thank you for joining us. And I know we'll get to you in a little bit. So Ed, uh, to you in regards to KT Tape, can you give us a little background on how KT Tape came to be and what is it about the product that it makes it unique to be able to do what it does do? So I will turn this over to you now. Well, thank you very much. I'd love to do that. Uh, let me just uh, share my screen with you uh, real quickly so that, uh, let's see if we can show you the presentation. Uh, 
Okay, can you see that okay? Yes. Okay, perfect. So what I'd like to do is just kind of go through real quickly. Uh, KT Tape, as far as a company started, if you'll remember back in August of 2008, the Winter Olympics, or I mean the Summer Olympics, uh, Carrie Walsh had the KT Tape on her shoulder. And that's the first time that uh, one of our original owners saw the product. They reached out and uh, found it with Kate, with uh, Carrie Walsh. They were able to uh, put some things together. And that's when the company started, it was 2008, and we saw it on Carrie Walsh. But from that point, um, it, it was going fairly well. And then in, in 2012, at the next Olympics, the individuals for the national television couldn't say kinesiology tape easy. So they shortened it and started to call it KT tape. And that happened to be the name of our company. So now if I were to say to someone, can you please get me a Kleenex? What is it you would get me? Or you would get me a tissue because Kleenex is a company. But in our minds, we all think about a Kleenex as a tissue. So now what's happened in the kinesiology world, when you say kinesiology, everybody thinks of KT tape. So on this grid, you can kind of see there uh, we went from 2008 through uh, 2020, where we have some other products that, that help as well, as far as our company is concerned. You've probably also seen it on some uh, professional athletes throughout all of the different uh, verticals and the different sports that are, that are out there. Um, the one that you'll probably notice there is Tiger Woods. Again, Tiger had it on his neck with the, the KT logos above his collar. Again, it made just a huge impact. And that's when uh, the PGA came to us and said, you know, would you mind coming to our shows and, and can you do the official tape of the PGA and things such as that uh, because of the exposure that we got there with Tiger. Just a couple of weekends ago, um, you can see there again, uh, we end up, we're on about in, on the men's side of it. At any given time, we're on eight out of the 10 uh, top golfers, depending on the, the tournament, who's in that top 10. Hard thing about the men is because of the restriction with clothing, it's, it's a little more difficult to see. So you can see there, it, it either it's on their arm or up their neck, you'll be able to see it. As far as the women are concerned, we're able to see it a little better when it's on their legs or their arms. For serious athletes, getting hurt is not an if, it's a when. And when the pain hits your knees, your back, or any one of the many injuries common among athletes, KT Tape is there to help. KT Tape is a drug-free elastic sports tape that works when it's stretched and applied to the skin using simple techniques. Chris Harper, a practicing physical therapist, explains how KT Tape works. There have been a wide range of scientific studies aiming to measure and analyze the effects of different kinesiology tape application techniques. Researchers have hypothesized that the effect of kinesiology tape can largely depend on how the tape is applied. While the effects are still being evaluated clinically, researchers believe kinesiology tape has the ability to affect pain, perception, and mechanical processes in the body. With some applications, it is believed kinesiology tape can affect an athlete's sensory feedback, also known as proprioception, through receptors in the skin and in turn influence movement in the body. In other application techniques, kinesiology tape has been shown to reduce pain making it an excellent drug-free alternative. Another technique has been theorized to facilitate lymphatic drainage following an injury by lifting the skin, thereby helping reduce swelling. Due to the elastic properties and breathability of KT Tape brand kinesiology tape, it is an excellent alternative to other contemporary taping techniques. Professional athletic trainers, chiropractors, and physical therapists across the country, like Chris, trust KT Tape to provide patients pain relief and support for many common injuries. I use KT Tape products on aching knees during and after runs, on quads, hamstrings, and my lower back for gym workouts, and even on my shoulder when I play basketball. But those are just a few of the many uses for KT Tape. KT Tape products can be used for a number of soft tissue, muscle, tendon, and ligament injuries to provide pain relief. Back pain, shoulder pain, knee pain, plantar fasciitis, shin splints, and tennis elbow are just a handful of many injuries for which KT Tape products can be used to help you recover faster from pain. What's really great about KT Tape products is how easy they are to use. KTTape.com has over 50 step-by-step, easy-to-follow application videos to help you become an expert taper in no time. In these short two-minute videos, 
you can learn how to tape yourself for some of the most common sports injuries. KT Tape has a full line of recovery products available at kttape.com or any one of thousands of major and independent retailers across the country. Find it at a store near you in the pharmacy or first aid section near the tapes and bandages, as well as most sporting goods sections by the braces and wraps. So don't ignore those nagging sports injuries any longer. Find drug-free pain relief with KT Tape so you can train longer and finish stronger. People know me as a volleyball player, but I'm a cross trainer as well. I run, I lift, I do yoga, and that means sore knees, that means sore back, that means sore everything. KT Tape helps me push past it. Serious athletes use KT Tape to relieve pain and aching muscles and joints. Super easy to apply. Use it for many common injuries. So no matter how you work out, get KT Tape at a store near you. With KT Tape, I know that I can perform at my best. KT Tape. Train longer. Finish stronger. The thing that sets us apart from anybody else that's in the industry is we have a family of tape. The original cotton product, we had to use more material, less elastic. When you pull cotton, it frays. It takes on water and comes off one to three days. Then we've got our pro synthetic, which sets us apart because we're the only ones in the industry that have the pro synthetic. With the pro synthetic, we use less material with a bigger core of elastic. So we get a better stretch and a recoil. From there, we've also got extreme. So if you're a tough mudder, a triathlete, you're in water a lot, high humidity, the extreme is great for that. The extreme comes with a caution that you may have to use a baby lotion or something oily to get it back on. On the other end, we have a cotton product, which is called Gentle, and that's for pediatrics and geriatrics, or if someone has a skin issue that you're worried about pulling your skin off. So again, with our family of tape, we're the only ones with that pro-synthetic product. Again, as I explained, bigger core of elastic with the synthetic, smaller core with the cotton. One takes on water, the other wicks away. So here's the differences between the two that really give you a better stretch and a recoil and better philosophy behind kinesiology tape with our pro synthetic product. Go ahead and stop the sharing there. Back to you, and if there's there's any questions or anything that I can explain further with that, I'd be glad to. You're you're still on mute, Gloria. Yep, there we go. Um, so from that perspective, so it's the stretching aspect of it which gives it a lot of its properties. Whether as he was explaining, that could help actually help the lymphatic system from a swelling perspective as well as a stability perspective. So I know that when we did our survey, we saw a lot of people said uh, neck and back, and you showed some of the athletes with that. So what, and, and you might want to have your um, uh, your model come out, but what is the neck one trying to do? Um, I understand it when it's a joint to a joint, but the neck's got a lot of joint muscles. Are we trying to just stabilize the neck? Is that where most people use that one uh, and from the back one as well? Because that was that was a big hit on our survey. You bet. Yeah, I'll, I'll demonstrate how to, how to tape those two areas. Uh, but just quickly, in a nutshell, in that video that you saw, uh, sometimes that's, you know, a little too wordy. But if you have any soft tissue injuries, so ligaments, tendons, muscles, joints, we put the area on stretch, you put the tape on stretch. And notice with the stretch, with the tape, it's all due to the stretch and the recoil of the tape. So there's no medication, there's no metals, it's stretch and recoil. When we do that, when we put the area on stretch, put the tape on stretch, when you come back to neutral, there's a wrinkling of the skin, it pulls the skin away so you hydrate better, which is the healing process, and then supports you like a brace. So for example, you saw that on Tiger, Tiger uh, came in right before you know, he went out and he went into the, the uh, medical tent and said that he must have slept wrong because his neck was kind of clean and he couldn't really turn it from side to side. And so what that's doing is we'll put the neck area on stretch, put the tape on stretch. Again, when he comes back to neutral, it's hydrating and bringing that blood flow to try to help fill the area. So that's where you'll feel the warmth of that is because of the blood flow. And then it supports you like a brace so you don't continue to over use or, or damage the area. The best example I can give you, if you go to a doctor and you have some kind of a foot problem with your toes, with your ankle, something going on with your foot, they'll 
put you in one of those black boots. Well, the reason they're putting you in a black boot is if you'll stay off of that area for six to eight weeks, your body naturally heals itself. And so they'll put you in the boot and say, okay, you have to have this on 23 hours a day. You can shower, but other than that, you have to be in the boot. Well, that keeps you unlimited from, you know, you can go golf in the boot or you can play volleyball or you can do anything in that boot, right? So the tape is the exact same thing as the boot, but it keeps you in line and keeps you active in that sport. So we're trying to get the product on there to help your body heal in that six to eight weeks as it naturally will, but support it so you don't continue to damage the area. Okay. If you'd like me to tape the neck, I can do that, or did that answer that question okay? Yes, um, and actually we did have a lot of questions on the back, so the neck and the back would be a good one. And while you're doing that, we do have a couple of questions that I'll get, I'll, I'll ask you as, as it uh, goes. And the first one is, does KT work with arthritis pain? And, and I'm going to say yes, because that's what I tape my thumb with. Um, so maybe you can answer that one as well. Um, and it does, and then another question, uh, then I'll segue to let you do your demonstration. Um, is it meant for bones? Um, for example, a collarbone fracture, could the KT tape actually aid in faster healing? Yeah, so let's, let's go ahead and take the arthritis one first. Um, the unfortunate thing about arthritis, as you know, um, it's a very difficult one to then uh, reverse or completely get rid of, right? And, and so I kind of, another example of it is I play basketball. I, um, I had both ACLs replaced with surgery. So it's not that I'm going to have these perfect knees again, right? But the pain that's associated with it typically comes after I'm done playing. So once I warm up and I'm playing, I'm fine. But afterwards, my knees are just, you know, I don't want to say locked up, but it, it's just very painful with my knees and it's hard to get them going. So when I wear the tape, what the tape does, like I said, again, brings that hydration there. And that hydration is what really helps you. So with your arthritis, that's the same thing. You're getting circulation, you're getting that to come to that area. So you're going to get a relief of pain. So that's why it really does help. And when you're seeing it with your thumb, you've got the same kind of thing. You're getting a better range of motion. You're getting a fill that's sending that signal to your brain that you're supported, that you're not going to hurt it if you continue to try to push it a little bit further. So that's what you're getting as far as that's concerned. Okay. Um so can you demonstrate that one for us? And again, you want to keep your voice level high because something must be going on in your environment and every once in a while you, you just peak in valley. We could hear you, but it gets a little light. Okay. And it, it just be, you know, my voice is changing at my age, so that may be it. But it's just, it just goes a little higher and a little lower, but I'll, I'll work on it. Okay, so we're going to back up here a little bit and we'll just kind of... That neck on a stretch, so go forward, and then with her arms in front, she'll just hold it. And what that does is that puts that entire area there on stretch. And so this is the exact one that we did um, with Tiger Woods. And again, I'm, I'm just going to go over top of the clothing here. Uh, normally, you're going to want to put that right against the skin. Because again, what we're looking for in that skin is that wrinkling effect. And when she comes back to neutral, it will wrinkle up that skin. For our demonstration, and so that I'm not going underneath clothing, and then you can see it. I'm just going to put it right over top, and you'll see how that goes. So just twist and tear for the first part, and then you go around the neck there. And there's no stretch with that at all. So when I turn it over and I get the back for paper, all I'm going to do is go right along with that spine. You can see as I give it that stretch, I'm giving it a pretty good stretch that goes through there. And then I just let go at the end again with no stretch. And then with our product, I use the backer paper. We can just rub it to get it going, and that'll get the adhesive going so it'll stick nice and good skin. We're going to duplicate that and do the same thing on the other side. Over there. So no stretch there. Grab the backer paper. Again, here's where that stretch comes and we just follow it right down. Got it. So you can see how that goes with the neck. On the third piece now, this is really the support. Go to the shoulder, no stretch there. And then I'm just going to come up. 
over and back down. So hopefully you can see that okay. Very easy application. Now, when she comes back up and then with her arms, I know that's going to be very, very hard to see, but if I feel this right here, there's a wrinkling all through her skin like we talked about. So yep. that's, that's the neck. Can you hear that all right, Lorianne? Yeah, we got it. We got, there was just some parts, but I think you demonstrated it quite well. Okay. So what was, what was the next one? Um, it was the back one that we saw um, when they were putting it on their back. Because I'm assuming on this particular neck one, Ed, this one's going to be very hard to do by yourself. But the back is something you could probably do. Yeah, so anywhere that you can reach, you can take. If you can't reach the area such as this, it's very difficult because you can't reach that area. But if you've got anybody with you that can watch a video, we have videos and they're three to four minutes in length. What I tell people is watch all four minutes where you see where they're going and complete. Then go back when they put the first piece on, pause and put that piece on. Second piece, pause and get that on. Very simple, very easy to do. So if they can watch a video, they can take you. Okay. Well, besides the, um, I've got a request for the shoulder and for the knee. And in the knee, the question is, that, will it work for a meniscus tear of the knee? Okay. So like I had explained to you with my ACLs, so I've had um, both ACLs replaced. And then I've also had um, scoping on both knees for that uh, particular thing. I can't repair that, but I can stop the tear. So those little micro tears that are happening is where that pain's coming from. So you want to get your knee taped up. Um, so once you tape that up, it won't continue to have those little micro tears. You're still going to have to go in and, and do uh, scoping to clean that up and get it nice so that it doesn't have to continue to tear. Okay. Um, would you, you want me to show you a knee or the back or uh, I got I got a request for the, the back, the knee, and the shoulder. So those are the three requests I have. All right. Well, you stop me if you don't have time, and I'll just start doing all of them. Okay. So with the back, same thing. I've got that position, I hope. Okay. You can see that? Yep. So she's going to bend it over. So again, I'm putting that area on stretch. And I'm just going to, again, go over the clothing here. But if you look at anybody on the back, there's two little dimples. Right. That's the area we want to go after because that's like the junction box where everything comes in and then goes back out. So if you're having lower back pain, it's because of all of those ligaments, tendons, nerves, and everything else that come into that junction box. So what we're going to do again is you'll twist and tear. And we'll just lay that down without any stretch at all. And then grab that backer paper. And that stretch is going to come from there. And I go right across the back and then just let it go again on the other side. See that? The second piece will just go right below it. And again, we're going over those dimples. Just right where we're at. You want to go over those, stretch that, lay it down again. So now, if you were to say, well, I would ask then, does your pain radiate up or does it radiate down? If it radiates down, I'm just going to take another piece. And again, if, if this is you, you're able to point right to where it is, right? They'll reach back there and they'll go, this is where I hurt. And they'll show you exactly where it is. So all I'm going to do is chase it. I take this one, I put it up a little above it on the skin, and I get a hold of it. And right where they said it goes, I'm just going to chase it. Does that make sense? So okay. now I'll have them stretch that out and tell me, do they have more pain here or here? If they do, I'll just put a second piece right next to it. Okay. So that's lower back. If it radiates up, I'll start here and I'll go right where the pain is up with the tape. So it depends on where it's radiating, but if it's just right in the central area, it's those two pieces. Okay. Terrific. Does that work? And then for the, the one for the knee. Okay. So with the knee, I'll try to get it so that you just put your back. It's going to be pink by the time this is over. <laughs> so we need to back up. Okay. Okay. 
They can see it in there. Okay, so this one is the one that I actually use. So I'm going to take one of my 10 inch, so this is a 10 inch piece that they come pre cut. I'm going to fold it in half. And all I'm going to do is then round the corners when I cut it. So now I end up, you see that I've got two pieces. So with this first little one in this position again, you'll see that, that her knee is on stretch. And all you do is twist and tear in the middle, poke my thumbs through. So when I get a hold of that, it's going to go right in front of the patella. So let's put that down just like that. Again, rub those to get it going. Then we're going to take one of our 10 inch pieces. Once again, twist and tear on the top. That goes down, right on the top. I'm just going to follow it till I feel the bone of the knee on the side here. When I feel the bone right there, that's my stretch. I come in front and then just let it go. I'm going to duplicate that and do the exact same thing on this other side. And the knee's a really good one for you to be able to see everything that's going on. Again, I follow to the bone of the knee stretch in front, then let it go. So there's the full application. You can see right now her knee is nice and smooth. She's on stretch. I've stretched the tape through this area to hold the knee. Now, if she goes back to neutral, can you see that okay? Yeah. Get that over there. Can you see her knee now? Yeah. See how that's all wrinkled? See all the right. wrinkled area? It's holding that patella and everything right in place and all of that wrinkling. So that's exactly what we want from wherever we put the tape on. Okay. And then the last one is the shoulder. And while you're doing that one, which I'm assuming is similar to the knee from perspective of the joint, but on that one, the question was, are the colors different in some ways? I think the colors are, diff are, are not necessarily different, but you had said that there was four, three or four different levels of whether you were using cotton, synthetic, or the extreme tapes. So there's the color yeah, so, determining that. So, so I'll, just, I'll just explain that real quick. Um, as far as our colors are concerned, in cotton and also in synthetic, we have 10 different colors. And those are all just for fun and fashion. Team colors, you know, that kind of thing. When we first began, we, we came up with the 10 colors that we thought would be most popular. There were others who would say, well, what if you do like a camouflage? Can you do silver can you do a white and so all of a sudden we're getting all these colors and people saying they could sell thousands of rolls we found that the 10 colors were about it okay. and so the color is just for fun and fashion but on our videos and such as you just saw me using the pink i was trying to use something that you could see on our videos we'll use different colors just so you can see where the first piece goes second piece goes third piece goes instead of it all being one color and going okay what happened right there so again, color is just for fun and fashion. Um, with our products in the black box is our cotton product. It's been around for about 40 years. So this is the one again, um, that when we stretch it, the material, we needed more material, less elastic. So this one is designed to stay on the skin one to three days. A gentle product is also a cotton product. It's in the gray box, but it's for those that have skin irritation or you're worried about their skin if they're, you know, Yep. For some reason, Ed, you froze. Oh, we might have lost him on his video. So why don't we do this? Uh, why don't we then move over to Stephanie? So let me just tell Ed that he froze. So with that, so Stephanie, you are the general manager um, for Sugar Bottom Hemp. And I really appreciate you coming on board. In fact, I'm going to give you the appropriate backdrop here. Uh, so I'm coordinated um, in regards to that. And then I'm going to pass it over to both Sarah and Alexis to do the Q&A and I will be monitoring the chats, okay? Excellent. Thank you for joining us um, and I really appreciate all the information that you've provided. So I will let you take over as you see fit. Awesome. 
Well, this is uh, such a great honor. I'm so excited to be back with the ladies of the WMGA. Uh, I can't tell you how much uh, the last few years uh, had meant to me uh, having the WMGA as a uh, social network for uh, for golf and friendship and camaraderie. And it's just such an honor to uh, have it come full circle in another way that I never anticipated. So I'm very grateful uh, for this time and to be able to share with you what I've learned uh, through the last four or five years of not only using CBG, uh, CBD on my own, but then in launching um, an e-commerce brand, brand last spring and then becoming a farmer uh, through the winter and all this year. So it's just been it's been a lot of fun. Um, so I put together a, a little PowerPoint. Do I want to go into that? Like, what is CBD? Um, so let me share my screens. I got kicked off of my computer. I don't know how. So I, I apologize. This is going to take a little bit of a second to pull up um, to find. Um, so oh, let me just. I know I've been using your product. Oh, there we go, right here. You good? I'm good. Yeah, it's okay. just downloading. I'm sorry. No worries. No, I. I mean, I have yeah, we products here. <laughs> I've been using. Uh, I've been using the tinctures actually to help. I know with COVID and everything, it's been very stressful for most of us. Um, so I mean, I've been taking CBD for probably the past year now, but. Steph was kind enough to send me some stuff to try and I've been using it for the past few weeks and it's amazing um, how much it works, how much it can help relieve your stress. I take it before bed to help me sleep at night. I've used, uh, I have the, the salve that I've been using on sore muscles. Um, I mean, it's awesome. It's real great stuff and uh, I'll let you get into, you know, more about okay. CBD and what it, what it can do and how it can help you. Yeah, so I'm halfway downloaded, so I'll talk through the, the rest of the download. Um, and the most basic uh, way to describe what CBD is, it's cannabinoid oil, uh, cannabinoid, cannabinoid oil, and that is a byproduct of the hemp plant and also um, the cannabis plant. Hemp and cannabis are uh, cousins. They look the same. They smell the same. Uh, it's, it's very funny to be working on the farm and especially during harvest and know that I have this very high uh, cannabis smell on me, but it is truly hemp. Um, and really what differentiates the two is that hemp, uh, the hemp plant has had the THC bred out of it and the CBD content increased dramatically. So uh, in like a cannabis plant, THC is somewhere in 20% all the way to a much higher, you know, 90%, if you will, maybe a 70%. Um, but in uh, the hemp plant, uh, here we go. Uh, in the hemp plant, it is a much, uh, CBD is the predominant cannabinoid um, and then everything else uh, falls in behind it. We are only allowed to grow uh, hemp that has a projected THC level of 0.3 or under. We are not allowed to plant and grow uh, anything that will have a higher level of um, CBD or THC than that 0.3. So um, we're on a beautiful 100 acre horse farm, uh, sugar bottom hemp in central Bucks County. And uh, we do everything here on the farm uh, except for extract uh, the CBD from uh, the plant. It says that we, uh, we go back and forth as whether or not we want to, to add the extraction uh, facility here or not. Um, but right now we just grow the hemp uh, and then I take it up to Vermont, get it processed and uh, bring the products back uh, to the farm and then sell it. Uh, at every step we have to test. And that is true of every uh, hemp business. They have to, you have testing uh, for your seeds uh, to make sure that they're compliant um, before the company can sell them. Uh, so that's not on us. But then uh, prior to harvest, we get tested to make sure our hemp is compliant under 0.3 THC. And then after, uh, and then once products are made, then um, they're tested one more time. 
Um, we have a wide range of products that uh, we make here now. So the tinctures, um, a healing salve. I also have a roll on that is CBD and menthol because some people really like that. And I found that that's uh, quite helpful. Uh, we do pet treats and a pet tincture because we have dogs and cats with uh, anxiety, with, um, you know, that, that act out, that um, are sensitive to thunder, that have separation anxiety. Uh, I had a woman last week tell me about her cat that has um, seizures and our tincture um, provided the relief where the cat has no more um, seizures and run, runs around like a kitten. It was just really a sweet story, but she, the, the cat has to take it every day. And then we do pre-rolls, which are joints, uh, and, and they, they're very funny because they smell exactly like cannabis, but I promise you they're not. Um, and then uh, the pate de, uh, de, fui, um, pate de fui, um, which are just the fruit jellies. And uh, so those are our, our product line. And this is, uh, I love this picture because this is a cola. This is the top bud uh, on a hemp plant and it looks exactly the same as what you would get in a cannabis plant. Um, so they, they truly are the same. It's just that that um, THC has been bred out of it and now it is a much lower uh, compound and the CBD is the major compound in the plant. Um, what CBD does is that it feeds your endocannabinoid system. And in that you have um, two different receptors, the CB1 receptors and the T CB2 receptors. CB2 are um, much more uh, central nervous system, if you will. And uh, CB1, um, you know, they're, they're all, they're very uh, intertwined and they all work together um, harmoniously and the one compound that feeds them like a vitamin is cannabinoid oil, which is the CBD. Um, so that's where um, we really know that it goes to those parts of your body that uh, need it, uh, which is great. And that's, that's really the difference when you go back to um, products and you ask, what is the difference between a tincture and a gummy? or smoking it or a gummy. And really it's how quickly do you absorb it into your system? And then how well uh, does it go around uh, to those areas that need it the most? And it's, it's not like taking a shot of tequila where you, you feel it and you're like, oh gosh, a million bucks, you know, this is awesome. You know, it's a miracle cure. It, it's not that. It is something that's a lot more subtle. It's a lot more, um, uh, it kind of creeps up on you and you forget to take it for a day. And then you realize um, that you're not feeling your, your normal self. And that's really when you know um, that it's working the way that you want it to. Um, you know, it, it's a vague answer, but I have people that take it and it's just immediate and they're all in and, um, you know, they, they can't believe how great they feel. So it really... It depends on the person and it depends on, you know, it depends how much pain you're in. If you have a lot of, um, if you're taking a lot of medication for pain, you're going to need a, to take a higher dose of CBD. You're going to need to take it for a couple of days uh, till you really feel some relief. If it's something where you don't necessarily have a lot of pain, but you have anxiety and that list maker is keeping you up at night, uh, CB, you, you need a lower dose because you don't really, um, you just wanna turn that, that list maker off. And so it depends on when you, you know, I would take, if I have sleep issues, I take it at night. If I have residual pain issues, I would take it in the morning um, so that I would you know, feel better during the day. And, uh, you know, I'm trying to go quick to be um, sensitive to everybody's time. So I'm kind of glossing over things and I apologize for that. Um, when uh, we talk about CBD and how it helps your body, there's so many, uh, there's a lot of research and there's no research. Um, you know, it's one of those 
things that uh, it was only in the last 10 years that CBD became prominent. And it was really because of Epidiolex, which is a, uh, a pharmaceutical drug for children with epilepsy. And it was through that, that, um, you know, it was really for children with severe epilepsy and it's a high dose of CBD. And they learned that children, um, it really helped children with um, reducing their symptoms and their rate of, of uh, seizures to the point that they could live a much more balanced life. And so a lot of the things that are on this slide, as far as it treating, we know that, um, you know, the people that uh, take it and report back uh, have these symptoms, but the uh, amount of scientific research is not the same as with pharmaceutical drugs because we are not, um, we're not regulated by the FDA. And so uh, I cannot make health claims when I talk about what CBD does, but these are things that we know that it helps. Um, you know, I, I have personal experience where it helps tremendously with neurodegenerative diseases. It uh, provides uh, the wiring and uh, the connections in the brain that people need to, to be more um, at ease and um, communicative and, and really helps take away the agitation that comes with a lot of neurodegenerative diseases. So, um, you know, there isn't scientific proof, but I have seen it on multiple occasions with a, a, a wide variety of people. Um, so yeah, so that is where that helps. And the last piece that I would just like to spend a moment of time on is the certificate of analysis. And when you're buying CBD, you wanna buy from a reputable source. And the way that you know that they're reputable is through their certificate of analysis. Um, it is not something that we are mandated to post on, on our website, but it is something that um, most people do. Um, I have three pages of our certificate of analysis and I don't have a pointer to be able to show you things. Um, so you kind of have to really look at this quickly. And this one is, is up on my website. Um, uh, and this is for the 500 milligram uh, tincture. The real meat of this page is the terpene profile. Because we talk about CBD, we talk about THC, and um, I now have a CBG. But what we don't talk about are the terpenes. And to me, this is the um, extra vitamins that you get within uh, the tinctures and the CBD products that you're purchasing that give you the extra benefits. And in this page, in the second column, halfway down, you'll see you know, the less than two, less than two. And then uh, you'll see the number for carifeline is 38. Well, beta carifeline is an amazing anti-anxiety terpene. And the fact that we have a high number, it really adds uh, that benefit uh, for people. Uh, humulene, same thing. It's great for uh, inflammation and pain. Uh, a little bit further down, is it on that column? No, um, I'm just trying to think of it. We have mercine in here, the high level. Uh, usable, you know, we have some really great um, fenchol, great terpenes in our, um, in our tinctures and our products. And it's, I believe it's those that make them stand out um, and give people the benefits that they really want. Um, and then the last, you know, the second page, you're seeing the potency levels. The third page, you never see this uh, or rarely see this. But this, uh, the top uh, bracket is your residual solvents. So that's how your product, how the CB, um, CBD was extracted out from the hemp plant. Um, the second one is the uh, mycotoxins. Third one are your pesticides. And the last one are your heavy metals. It's really important that all of these areas are um, under the limit because these are the areas where people cut corners. You know, it's the solvents, it's a less expensive, using a less expensive processor. 
um, you know, it's mold, it's pesticides, it's herbicides, all of those things come in uh, to this third page and you wanna know that you have um, good clean products. And that kind of leads you, leads to what we do at the farm. Um, and I'm just gonna gloss through this. You know, this is where we start the season and I'm really gonna run through this quickly just so you can see what goes into making um, CBD. It, it's really, to me, this is why the products are so expensive. You know, all the, the hands, hands on work that needs to, do, to be done on the farm that really makes a difference. So, you know, we start here on the left with the white lines, that's lime and potash that we put into the soil that will release through the growing season. Um, we, <laughs> we do um, trenches in each of the rows so that uh, we know that our uh, hemp plants have enough of a root zone so that they can get big enough. From there, uh, we till, I was on the tractor, um, digging the trenches and Austin, our grower was in the background and he was on the tiller you know, making sure the rows, um, you know, was, the soil was nice and loose. We then went through and we put plastic down so that we can um, make sure that there are no uh, weeds growing in and around our hemp plants so that they're getting all the nutrients. Underneath the tape, uh, the, the white plastic is uh, watering tape so that we can get the fertilizer and nutrients in um, throughout the season. And then that's what the field looks like when it's done. Um, these are the seedlings that we start on the farm. We do it all inside. Uh, then we plant them uh, outside. So we're making sure that each spot has um, every three feet, uh, three to four feet, there is a, um, yeah, that's a four footer. We, we know what a four footer looks like. Every four feet, there's a, uh, a plant and that plant survives and grows through the season. Uh, really important, um, you know, to see how they grow, um, making sure they're getting the nutrients. Every plant is healthy and strong. And, uh, you know, as we go through the season, you can see they're getting bigger and bigger and taller. This plant, um, you know, is definitely a big and bushy plant. Um, and then on the other fields, they were a little bit more Christmas tree-like. Um, the left field, the left picture is um, uh, a different field than the right picture. The right picture has been that same field all the way through. Uh, when we get close to harvest, we do everything again by hand. We can't use machines because these plants are really sticky and uh, oily. And that oiliness is really important because that, that gives you the CBD, that gives you the terpenes, that just gives you so much more quality um, throughout the growing season. Um, we had quite a good team. And so every day uh, we cut down the plants and within three hours, we were moving, we were taking all the green material while it was still wet and moist um, and stripping it off and putting it into those uh, containers, those crates in the background. Um, you know, so we had a good crew, um, the table and, you know, just friends chipping in and, and you know, we're just stripping it off of um, the stem um, and storing it into those crates so that we can dry it and make sure that uh, we get all the moisture out, uh, you know, flipping, flipping them and turning them throughout um, the four day process to dry. And then from that point, um, we put them in bags and you can see they get really nice and dry, um, still green, but that's then what we take up to Vermont. Um, they crush it. Uh, or grind it up, uh, attach it at a very cold temperature to ethanol, and then uh, essentially do another distillation where they pull out the oil from uh, the ethanol, from the green material, and that then is the full spectrum um, CBD that we use in all of our products uh, across the line. So it's a lot of information. It's all, everything is done by hand. Everything is done in small batches. And, you know, we, we like full spectrum because we want all of those terpenes. We think that even just that small amount of THC, that 0.3% adds value and gives, um, gives people 
uh, what they were looking for. No. I'm gonna go to the stop share. Perfect. Yeah, so Steph, we have some questions for you. <laughs> really? Like that? Do you have many questions for you? <laughs> <laughs> Go back to the second slide. What did you say? Can you take a tincture if you take an allergy pill or migraine med? So can you just go over, you know, yes. any interactions with medicine or food? Yeah. So um, that's a great question because um, CB, uh, the, the tincture and um, I'm trying to get to my camera. So when you take a tincture and, um, and the oil, it is... There is no known um, drug interactions with uh, CBD oil and any sort of medications. Uh, and in fact, a recent study, and I'll have to uh, find it, but if you Google it, it's within the last two months showing that CBD is effective in treating uh, migraines. Um, you know, the key is, is finding out what your dose is and figuring out where you see a benefit. Um, so I got the first part of the question. What was the second part? Is oh, when you take it. Yeah, and, and yeah it doesn't, no, it, um, no food interactions, no drug interactions. And, um, I like to take it first thing in the morning. I, um, take a full dropper. You know, that's the other thing you're supposed to take, um, a full dropper. So when you buy a bottle, you know, it's 30, uh, one droppers, you know, of, so it's a month's supply of CBD and you take a full dropper under your tongue and you let that dissolve in for about 30 to 60 seconds. And I do it before my coffee because it has a little bit of flavor. And uh, sometimes it's a hard uh, thing for people to get past because it's funky, it's earthy, it's mushroomy, it's got a bit of pine flavor, but those are the terpenes and those are the things that you want in your tincture to know that it is exactly what they say it is. Um, so I, then I drink the coffee and that washes away all the flavor. Um, why tinctures are good is that the amount that you absorb into your bloodstream under your tongue is much higher than if you eat. So like I have, um, you know, we have the pate de foie uh, now, um, and it's really because um, there are people that don't like the flavor. Um, my dad just does not like the flavor. He will not do the tincture and he has a lot of pain. And it's like, just take, you know, I, I can't force him to take it. You know, he's, he's my dad, of course. So you can't force him anything, but the edibles are a great way for him to get um, his daily dose of CBD. He, uh, you absorb, um, it's like, it is a, a, a much smaller amount of CBD when you eat it because it has to go through your stomach to get to your liver. Whereas when you do the tincture, it absorbs right through your mucous membrane and what you then don't absorb um, eventually will get into your liver, but it is, um, you know, you absorb 65% of the CBD in your tincture and it's like 30% when you eat them. So questions related to that full dropper. If I'm a beginner CBD user, do I start with mm -hmm. the full? Well, there's two ways to do that. You could do like I do a thousand mill I do the thousand milligram every day. And if I happen to have like a fifteen hundred milligram, I'll do three quarters of a dropper. Um, so it depends what your what number you end up buying. You could start with the five, 500 milligram, which is over there on the shelf, um, you know, the 500, and then you could do a full dropper of that, or you could start at like three quarters and go from there and see what works for you. You know, if you feel like you've gotten a little bit of benefit and then it's gone, that's why then you would then go to a higher rate. Did that answer that question? Absolutely. And the second part of that okay. question. Do you still take a full dropper in the morning if your goal is to use it for sleep or do you take it at night? Always say, then you would take it at night. If it's always for sleep, then you take it at night. Um, but I have, to I have to guess that if the list maker works at night, the list maker is on in the morning. 
So like I, I take it in the morning because I just, you know, I can procrastinate and, you know, I get sidetracked and do other things. And so I take it first thing in the morning and then I'm just in gear. And then if I have a, a day where I'm just really working on something and I can't get to sleep, then I'll do like a third of a dropper or half a dropper and I'll be asleep in 10 minutes. It just, it stops the, it stops the talking. Can you differentiate or what are the benefits between taking a tincture compared to the salve? I know like I use the salve when I have sore muscles, yes. but I take the tincture at night to help me sleep. So yeah, exactly. Exactly. And so the salve, um, we have a bigger size. So this is a, a big one. And so the salve, um, yeah, it's, you know, that's, it's not pretty <laughs> kind of, a, um, but you use the salve on sore muscles and it's spot specific and you're getting CBD and like our salve, it goes, it has, um, willow bark and arnica in it, which are also, uh, high pain relief. Um, but the, the real key with it is that you're getting a high dose of CBD specifically to that spot that hurts. Um, you know, the list maker that is keeping you from sleeping is in your, like, you can't just put the salve on your head and, and be able to sleep. So I know it's being silly, but you know, so that's why you would then take, uh, the tincture, um, you know, to, with that. You know, so all the, all the things that are kind of anxiety related, um, you know, that's really where the tincture helps. If you have uh, arthritis, that's where the tincture helps. If you have, um, you know, things that really, uh, you know, any kind of neurodegenerative, like that's where the tincture really, really helps that. Um, people that, like I have a gentleman that takes it because he works in construction and it just takes his body a long time to warm up. And he loves the tincture for that. Like a salve wouldn't give him that relief he's looking for. Can you use them simultaneously if you have an anxiety? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I had, I pulled a muscle in my neck uh, last week. And so I've been going, you know, I've been using them both, um, you know, to try to get that to heal more quickly. So, yeah. Is there a difference between products for CB1 and CB2? I think that refers to- Yes. Yeah, so um, CB2 is, CB1, I'm sorry, is um, the central nervous system and all the things related to that. And so what they're finding is CBG helps that. And I can't say the word, it's kind of draw, I can't even say it. It's, it's a tongue twister for me, what CBG stands for. Um, but that is a super cannabinoid like CBD, like THC. It's like the mother of all cannabinoids because CBG um, takes from THC. So we planted this year CBG and there is zero THC in the field and very high CBG levels. And it's particularly uh, beneficial for glaucoma, for any sort of GI issues. Um, and Huntington's disease, uh, which is neurodegenerative, uh, it's also helpful, um, uh, you know, so for any of those. And uh, there are a few people that have grown it this year. Um, last year was the first year that uh, CBD was, or hemp was able to be planted widely. Um, several states like Kentucky, Oregon, and Colorado started planting hemp for CBD in 2014. So that's why, you know, it's only been a few years that you're hearing about it. Pennsylvania, New Jersey, um, all these other states were able to start planting hemp with the 2018 Farm Bill. Well, that was passed in December. So 2019 was the first year that we were all able to plant and so that's why you're seeing um, a lot of CBD hitting the market from local suppliers like ourselves. And CBG, this is the first year for that. So we are, I have uh, pre-rolls um, for CBG. Um, 
I won't really do a lot of these. I'll put these up on the website and I'll sell them like, <laughs> I'll roll them as I sell them. Um, but uh, I'll be doing um, more of, I think I will be selling a lot more of the house blend, which is our special sauce and CB, uh, CBG Matterhorn. And um, people love this. They love smoking it because, um, you know, you take a, a hit and you think you're going to get stoned. You think you're going to get like this massive like wallop of cannabis ex uh, experience of THC, but it never comes, but your body gets so much more relaxed and you can feel it like a wave and it stays for, you know, a couple hours. So, you know, this is for people that want to take uh, a little something before they sleep and, and are okay with smoking, you know, two or three hits of, uh, of the joints is a good way to go. So I know you can't make any medical claims, but have you seen any evidence that this helps with blood pressure? Uh, no, and I, I did see that question come up and I didn't have a chance to Google that. I don't know people, I, uh, I really don't know anyone with high blood pressure. Okay. Um, you know, but I, to that point though, but when, you know, when you take like, uh, people that have, um, you know, uh, ADHD and things like that, the medicines that they take for those definitely get you more amped up and CBD does not do that. If anything, CBD kind of brings down your pulse rate. It makes you more calm. It makes you more able to focus. And so you're not, um, you know, it doesn't give you that amped up feeling. It definitely gives you a, a lot more calm. So I don't know if that helps or not. I do have one more question here. My husband yeah. is to drug testing as a truck driver. Will this come up in a mm. drug test? Good question. Potentially. And that's where that is truly the difference between CBD, I mean, uh, full spectrum and broad spectrum. Um, he, I would ask that he research what their what the union says about using CBD um, because some unions allow for it and uh, there are there is a trace amount I mean there is 0.3 percent THC so there is a chance that you can um, test positively you know it's like Elaine and the um, the poppy seed uh, bagels I don't know if you remember that Seinfeld um, you know really it was the CBD I promise you know, it's, it is a very small amount. So, you know, and I just, I personally, um, you know, don't recommend people to take it. Um, and that's where you would take a broad spectrum um, CBD product. And the broad spectrum is that there is absolutely no THC, but it has CBD and all the other terpenes. We don't have one um, because the way that we do our, um, our extraction method. So our extraction, everything happens at the same time. Um, so that makes it more difficult um, to have the broad spectrum. All right, and since we're golfers, if we could touch a little bit on some of the golf benefits of using CBD. I know we were talking, <laughs> we were talking earlier about, you know, some players are using it while they're on the golf course and carrying it in their yeah. bag experience. Touch on golf a little bit. Yeah, I, I use it all the time when I compete. Um, last year I used a vape pen and it was awesome. I mean, it really, uh, you have to time it correctly because uh, like if you smoke, you will have those first few minutes where you will be a little spaced out, um, but it really helps. It helps me tremendously for concentration. And you know how, how scattered my ball is in, in, in the fairway. So it really helps me. And I think Alexis will say the same thing. Yeah, um, I've taken it before. I've taken CBD before tournaments or like major events. Um, and I'll take the tincture before just to kind of calm me on the first tee. I mean, it's always nice to have a little bit of first tee jitters, but sometimes a little too much is uh, you get that amped up feeling. And I've found that if you take it, I'll take it probably an hour to an hour and a half before I tee off just to make sure that I'm totally calm you can go through your routine before you practice mm -hmm. uh, you know, tee off um and then i have used the salve um i have wrist pain and lower back pain typically so i mean i put the salve on before i go out and play and i will take the salve with me sometimes just in case i'm out on the course and have a little bit of pain but 
I mean, I highly recommend it. It's been very helpful. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's like a beta blocker mm -hmm. and, and not as, um, not as aggressive as a beta blocker, you know, cause you're still very present, but you're much, it's so much easier to get into the flow of the round and not get ahead and, and all that. It really is awesome. Yeah, I know, like, I have the uh, 1,000 milligram uh, tincture, but I, for me personally, I take only half, because I've found that just five, that that's just enough for me, taking 500 yeah. is plenty. So if you play around with it a little and figure out how much is the right amount for you, or, you know, sometimes I'll take 500 in the morning, and then I'll take another 500 in the evening if I need it. But mm -hmm. I've been experimenting with to see how much is the right amount. And I mean, I don't know if that's what you recommend or. Um, I highly recommend that. That is exactly it. You know, you really have to play around and figure out what works for you. And you know, what I hear so often is, uh, well, CBD doesn't work for me. I've tried a bunch of different brands and it's just, you're not taking enough and you're not being consistent enough. You know, if you take it for a week and you tell me it doesn't work for you, I'll refund you and any place should refund you for that. Um, but I, I feel like there's, if you take enough of it and uh, you'll get the result that you're looking for. Is that good? Do we have any other questions? If you have any, please put them in the chat. Uh, Stephanie, if I could ask you to give me three numbers from one to 30. 25. 54. No, oh, one to 30. Oh, one to 30. <laughs> um, 25, uh, nine, and 18. Got to be golf related. Okay. Nope. That's fine. All right. And while I'm doing that, then I'm also, Ed, I don't know if you're, you're there. I know your video froze. Um, if you could put your video back on. Uh, I did give him the two questions that were still outstanding, but give me one second on this. So um, during the time frame, let me just do one thing here. Hold on. You gave me nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Jeannie Gadsden is getting a gift from Sugar Bottom Hemp. The 18th person, 2, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, is Lisa Wahlberg, uh, is that one. And then the other one you said was 25, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, is Susan Longlad, is the 25th person on the list. So she gets nice. one on that. And then Ed gave me his numbers and the uh, winners of those three numbers was uh, Karen Hios. Uh, so Alexis, your mom is getting KT tape gift. Patty Milo and Wendy Dominic was the third. So those are the six people that will be getting a gift package from that. So I don't know if Ed, I see if there you are. So Ed, real quick, sorry, we lost you on Zoom. Somebody must have been downloading a, a movie. There you go. <laughs> All right. Uh, so just the, the question that we had was the one person asked about the collarbone and on the bone injury. And then we got one is that could you be taping it incorrectly and it actually hurts you um, by not doing the taping correctly? If you could ask, uh, answer those two. Okay. As far as the bones are concerned, um, again, some of those areas are very tough to put a cast to. So your ribs, your collarbone, things like that, that Again, you're trying to immobilize the area. Um, kinesiology tape does not immobilize. It's not a static. It moves with you, um, but it will definitely help you um, with the pain and then stability of keeping that bone kind of in place. Um, but it's, it's, it's not meant to be as far as a cast is concerned. And so it's not going to be, you know, a static keep you in place. Kind of thing. Okay. Got it. All right, and then what we'll also do, um, Ed, is in our wrap up, we'll link to some of the KT tape uh, videos that show shoulders and backs and stuff like that. So people will have an easy access to see that. 
So we will, we will do that as well. So I think we've got most of our questions answered. Stephanie and Ed, thank you so much for participating in this. It was a lot of great information. I know we're all trying to play some more golf before the end of the season up here. And with all the questions about travel, uh, we're just trying to play a lot. And I know I overdid it the last uh, week. So I appreciate all your help with both the KT tape and with the CBD information. So thank you very much. And with that, uh, Sarah, anything else we need or we're good? Oh, thank you, Steph. And thank you, Ed and Alexis and Laurieann. It was a great session. Yep. Thank you. And 